French educator and inventor Lois Brel was born on 4th January 1809 in Copevray, a small town east of Paris, to Simon Rain and Monique. He loved to spend time playing at the workshop of his father, who was a leather maker. When Lois was three, he tried to make holes in a piece of leather with an owl on his father's workshop, but the owl flipped from his hand and stabbed him in one of his eyes. He was then treated on the eye, but it could not save the damaged eye, which became severely infected and spread to the other eye. He suffered through the pain of his eyes for two years, but by the time he was five, he went completely blind in both of his eyes. But he did not even know he was blind at the time, as he kept asking why it was always dark. Though it was uncommon for parents in that era, yet his parents made certain that their youngest child was raised in a normal way. He learned to move around with canes and eased onto his disability with peace. Lois was a brilliant and creative child that was loved by the local teachers and priests in Copevray that he was taken to study in higher education. At age 10, he got admitted to the Royal Institute of the Blind Youth. There at the school, Lois was taught how to read through a system devised by the school founder Valentine Hay, who was not blind but was a philanthropist that devoted his life to helping blind people. He had a library of books that were embossed with heavy paper that the words were raised in Latin letters. The students would trace their fingers over the letters and read through it. Lois appreciated the Hay books but did not like the fact of the depth. The books were small and raised words were made in a complex artisanal process. Lois appreciated the Hay books but did not like the lack of depth. The books were small and the raised words were made in a complex artisanal process and that made the children unable to write by themselves, preventing the young Lois from sending letters back home. Hay, who made the children's book weighty and uncomfortable, felt the books could be easier to approve by educators, and that it did, except these educators were cited and thought it offered the best achievable results to the blind students. But Lois and his schoolmates had their opinions on the limitations of the books, the main one being the fact that the books spoke to the fingers with the language of the eye. Despite this, Lois was attentive to oral lessons and read his books repeatedly. That soon, he exhausted the curriculum, he was immediately employed as a teacher's aide and by 1833, he was promoted to full professorship teaching algebra, history and geometry. Lois also had another talent. He was skilled in music and became an accomplished cellist and organist after taking classes from Jean Nicolas Matigues. This became a major part of his contribution to the Catholic Church he played the organ for Catholic churches all over France. Lois met Captain Charles Barbier of the French army in 1821 who taught Lois another system of communication he invented called night writing. The impressions were of a code of dots and dashes impressed on a thick paper that could be interpreted with the fingers, allowing soldiers to share information on the battlefield without voicing their words. This became Lois's inspiration to develop his own system. Lois concentrated on his ideas, putting his strength into completing it. He innovated Barbier's night writing into a simple form with a maximized efficiency in 1824 at the age of 15. He published his work in 1829 and the second edition was published in 1837. In Lois's system, the cells were smaller and easy to recognize with a single touch of the finger. He also created a raised dot system using an owl with a secure area for the stylus to keep the lines straight and readable. Soon after his system was released, Lois was still passionate about his music, extended the system to include braille musical notation. He carefully made the musical codes flexible to meet the requirements of any other instruments. Lois published his first book method of writing words, music, and plain songs utilizing dots for use by the blind and arranged for them in 1829. Although the books were first published by Hay Method, he went on to publish more written works about the Braille system as general education for the blind, several of which still exist at the Braille Birthplace Museum in Cobray. Lois also made the braille system in a way that blind people could write letters that could be read by sighted people called decapoints. Pierre Francois Victor began developing a raphigraph. 
a device to emboss letters in the manner of a typewriter and received help from Lois. Despite Lois being admired with respect by his pupils, his writing system was not allowed at the institute during his lifetime. Hoi's successor showed no interest to alter the school's method of teaching and even showed hostility to Lois's work, once dismissing the headmaster of the school for translating a history book into Braille. Lois, who was always sick as a child, got worse in health as an adult. He lived with a persistent respiratory illness for 16 years that by the time he was 40 years, he resigned from his position as a teacher. He was admitted into infirmary at the Royal Institute when his health worsened, but he died two days after his 43rd birthday in 1852. The Bro system was finally adopted by the Institute two years after his death, after the students persistently insisted. It also became internationally recognized and used after Dr. Thomas Rhodes Armitage championed its course at the first All-European Conference of Teachers. The United States in 1916 officially adopted Braille for its schools for the blind and a universal English code was formalized in 1932. Lois has a large monument erected in his honor at his home square, which was also renamed Braille Square. His remains were removed at the cemetery of his death to Pantheon in Paris, but his hands were left in Copre, buried near his home. Several memorials also exist around the world in his honor and a worldwide postage stamp was commemorated in his name. In 1992, an asteroid was named 9969 Braille. Also, the Encyclopedia Britannica listed him as one of the 11 most influential inventors of all time. Lois was also honored with his own World Braille Day, which is celebrated on his birthday on January 4th and the 200th anniversary of his birth was celebrated all around the world. Due to his age at the time of his invention, Lois has remained an inspiration and hero for children, also becoming the subject of several juvenile literary works. Lois Braille's invention of the Braille system has endured through almost two centuries and still has the same powerful utility. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. We love you.